Thanks, Sage. Tom Spanbauer. Tom Spanbauer was the award-winning author of four novels, including The Man Who Fell in Love with the Moon, Now is the Hour, Far, Far Away Places, and In the City of Shy Hunters. And he's just finished a new novel, I Loved You More. He's an acclaimed writing teacher and the founder of Dangerous Writing. He's been teaching Dangerous Writing here at the Ink Spot since, I think, 2008, 2007? For a while. He's been teaching here for a while. Uh, I, think, I think at least 50, 40, 50 people have taken the class here at San Diego Writers Inc. Yeah. Wow. So. Really? Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> and this podium is from Tom and Sage, by the way. Uh, Natalie Goldberg, the uh, writer of Writing Down the Bones, uh, says this of Tom's writing. You feel pulled in immediately just by the ryth rhythms of his language, then by his great humor, his vast heart. There is no one like Tom Spanbauer writing in America. I dare you to read him and still hold on to the way you see the world. He turns things inside out into a deeper ground of being. And I think those of us who have read Tom's books or taken Tom and Sage, uh, their dangerous writing workshop, can attest to this. He changes the way that we see the world and the way we see our own writing and other writings. He's a gracious, warm instructor and friend, and former students have described him as generous, gifted, large-hearted. Uh, they have praised as dangerously inspired humanity. Uh, and I think it's time to hear from Tom Spanbauer. Thank you. Uh, really great to be here again. Gosh, 50 people? That's amazing. Um, yeah. Um, this is from uh, my new novel, I Loved You More. It's um, 1988 in New York City. I guess in a thumbnail sketch I would say that this is a story of um, a gay man and a straight man falling in love with each other and how they figured that out. Um, right now it's, it's on one page 131 and um, uh, the, the the narrator is Ben Grunewald, and uh, his friend, his straight friend, is Hank. And um, this is a weekend in Pennsylvania, where they've um, Olga and Hank and Olga, Hank's girlfriend, and Hank and Ben have gone to Esther's old house in Pennsylvania. And um, what's just happened is Olga's gone out picking wildflowers in the field and and pissed off a neighbor because um, she's from, um, um, she's from, I forget where, <laughs> somewhere in, in Central America. Argentina. Oh, she's from, she's from Argentina? <laughs> she, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, in, her, in her native country, she can go out and pick uh, flowers, but she goes picking flowers in um, New England and she gets in a lot of trouble. And um, the, the neighbor calls the cops and um, that ensues quite a, um, a, a flack and, and the, the cop arrives and Olga's angry and Hank is angry and then Ben gets in between the two and, and uh, Hank tells him, stay out of this, Grooney, which is, uh, uh, we'll, we'll refer to, that will be referred to later. I um, hope that's clear. It's kind of tough starting the middle of a book, but um, maybe it'll, I'll catch up with myself. That night, after our first bottle of wine, the sun making a spectacle of itself going down is when Hank and old Olga finally start to relax. Their visit to the enraged neighbor has cleared things up. I never doubted it. Just being close to Hank, to Olga, their physical beauty unnerves the gods, plus their offerings, a bottle of wine, and Olga made gazpacho and a blackberry torte. Turns out the neighbor and Hank had the same baseball team they liked. Philadelphia's, I think. The Phillies, maybe. Or is that football? Something is still caught in my throat, though, between my throat and my heart. That place that hurts where I smoke. But it ain't smoke. It's Hank saying, you stay out of this. 
We're on the screened in porch, the night, the dark night around us getting deeper. White linen, the good silverware, tall candles, short fat candles, votive candles, candles and candles. Their light, the way it always moves, so full and golden. Big heavy white dinner plates. Each of us a water glass and a wine glass, crystal that hums a wet finger along the rim. In the middle of the table, Olga's big bouquet of red and yellow and purple stolen flowers she's arranged into a large blue glass vase. Hank gives me a wink then starts in. Olga Rivas, he says, so pastoral, so Keats and Shelley, in her white dress like a Matisse painting, picking lovely wild flowers in a fluvious herbs, herbs in a garden meadow. Not in a mean-spirited way, but the way like only Hank can do. Olga cusses, hijo de puta madre, throws a baguette at Hank, then an anjou pair. But it isn't long, and Olga is laughing. She's sitting on Hank's lap, and Hank and Olga are laughing. I don't laugh. That big baby torpor in me. I try and tell myself that Hank's a guy, and guys are just this way, and I'm not a guy, never been one. Never will be, and it's just too fucking much to comprehend. Just let it go. But Hank is my friend, my friend that I love. It uh, it ain't long and way too loud. Big Ben just comes shooting out of my mouth. Fuck Hank, I said. You and I gotta fucking talk. Olga and Hank stop. They look over to me like, who's he? Olga's one eyebrow goes up Spanish, the way she uses her eyes, Latina attitude. She doesn't like it that I got the attention. And Hank, the look on his face, at first he acts like he doesn't know what I'm talking about, but Hank's eyes, the way they get fuck you blacker, Hank knows. Olga gets off Hank's lap, steps away. She keeps her hand on his shoulder as she speaks. I'll go open another bottle of wine, Olga says. Mi amor, she says. You want the California Cabernet or the Bordeaux? Hank's body is on alert, still he slouches down in the chair. One leg is up and his bare foot sets on the seat. I can't quite see his face behind Olga's big bouquet of red, yellow, and purple stolen flowers. The way he holds his head, Hank's face is in the shadows of the candlelight. I slide my chair over so we can see eye to eye. At the sternum, right in the middle of my chest, a light bulb that you can see the filament flickering. All the running boy wants is for me to get my ass out of there. It's a showdown, all right. We both know it. And I wish it weren't. But how else do you sh do shit like this? That's how guys do it, ain't it, I say. Hank stays hunched over, his head down, looking at his hands, rolls his thumbs. Zeus is pissed, and something big is going to blow. God the Father's going to kick ass. Supreme. <laughs> the power of men. Terrifying, really. Something, something so terrifying about this moment and so familiar, but I don't know why. There are petals, yellow ones from the sunflower, falling onto the white stars tablecloth. The, t the petals rough, rub off yellow onto my fingers. I take a deep breath. That's why male love is back to back, I say. It's about maintaining your position. If you love another guy, you show respect. Grooney Hank says, what the hell are you talking about? Stay out of this, Grooney, I say. You hurt my feelings. Hank's leg comes down off the chair and his big thud on the floor, his face big and bright in the candlelight, his empty wine glass right there, his finger fingerprints on the wine glass. Come on, man, Hank says, I was angry. Don't take it personal. It's weird, Hank, I say. How far away you can go and how fast. Then when you do speak, there's a threat behind it. That's your shit, Grooney, Hank says. But really, it's all bluff, I say. And if it isn't, you throw a thunderbolt, I say. Hank's face goes back into the shadows. Yellow is all over the place on my fingers on the tablecloth. Yellow fingerprints on my wine glass. I always make a mess of things. Hank, I wasn't questioning you, I say. You were stressed. I get it. 
I've, d I've done the same thing, believe me. You're usually so gentle and kind, I guess it just freaked me out you're talking to Olga that way. Does that make me a traitor? I was angry, Hank says. Angry is okay, I say, but is that the only, is it, but is that the only appropriate emotion? Can't men be afraid and confused too? Out there in the dark in the kitchen, Olga is opening drawers. Between Hank and me, the table and all the candles, the fires reflecting on the glasses, the shiny silverware. On the edge of flickering light and dark, Hank's face disappears, reappears. The way he holds his body so still, the enigma of Hank, the warrior ghost, hunter or prey, it's hard to tell. The old house is big and dark, it holds our silence. Only Olga in the kitchen, the pop of a bottle cork. Hank goes to speak, but he has to stop first to clear his throat. I thought, to, I thought that's what I was doing, Hank says. What? Showing you how confused and scared I was, Hank says. Hank, I say, when a man talks to me like that, all I can hear is my father. Fuck, Rooney, he says, you're doing it again. I'm not saying you're an asshole, I say, or that I'm superior. I do shit like that all the time. You're my friend, man, and this is what friends do. Like that night at Ursula Crohn's, Hank said. Friends don't let friends get away with shit like that, I say. I know I'm way too sensitive, but I don't want any shit to come between us, so I gotta tell you when shit comes up. When Hank speaks again, Hank, Hank ain't locked up far away, and he's Hank, the Hank I know again. Fuck, Rooney. You're totally right on, man, Hank says. Hank's big arm with his big hand on the end of it falls out of the shadows, down to the table, rattles the china. He pushes his own open palm out to me. Grooney big, Hank says. I'm sorry. Friends, fuck, friends again. Eating and drinking with friends. I'm feeling especially high because things for a while there look so bleak. Hank apologizes to Olga, and Olga says she should have known better, and we all get pretty high off each other. I barbecue the steaks, and Olga makes the salad dressing, and Hank opens more wine in that big, beautiful, dark, old house. After three hours of us eating and drinking, the table is a mess of meat scraps, corn cobs, wilted tomatoes and greens. Our wine glasses are fingerprints on them, Olga's red cherry lipstick. The three bottles of wine finished off, mostly by Olga and me. <coughs> then there's the snifter brandy. We'll all work a whole month paying this dinner off. Mm -hmm. Olga wants a cigarette. So what does she do but pull out a tin of Nate Sherman's out of her purse? I've quit and started smoking so many times in my life. This is one of those nights I start. The mean neighbor appeased inside this green porch, no mosquitoes under a roof. A warm summer night, the three of us in that big house, no lights on, just the many candles on our table, filled with good food, fine wine, our big snifters of Hennessy, Olga and I smoking. Still ahead are desserts and espressos. Still ahead are novels coming out in May. The night deep, dark, inside the, inside the house too, only the candlelight. Around the table, each of us a painting by Goya. Out of the darkness, a slow contour of light, and, and, is, and as if miraculous, out floats a face, an arm, a hand. Friday night, ahead of us still Saturday, still Saturday night, still Sunday morning. The train ride back to the city, still far enough away. Let's dance, Olga says. Hank lets out a little moan. Straight guys don't dance. I take a candle. I take a candle into the next room, the living room, to Esther's stereo hi-fi, a huge piece of oak furniture that is a record player. My God, the albums in there: Ella Fitzgerald, Duke Ellington, Billie Holiday, Count Basie, Rosemary Clooney, Nat King Cole, Johnny Mercer, and Frank Sinatra before he was a Republican. <laughs> it takes me a while, but I figure out how the stereo hi-fi works. Pile a bunch of records on and crank up the volume. The song is Lullaby of Old Broadway. I dance the candle across the dark room back onto the porch. The table is an altar with all the candles. When I get to the table, I set down my candle, do a twirl. Hank's rolling his eyes. 
I take Olga's hands and her cherry red lips are smiling big and we start dancing. Olga's still wearing